Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss Late Code Question 491 that says non-decreasing subsequences. So here you are given an integer array nums and we need to return all the different possible non-decreasing subsequences of the given array with at least two elements in that. And you may return the answer in any order, so the order doesn't matter. Okay, the question is simple that first uh, we need to find all the subsequences that are not in decreasing. That means the elements uh, from i to n would be should be greater than or equal to the previous element. So as uh, let us look at the first test case. Here we are given four six seven seven. So we can include a four six is one answer because six is greater than or equal to four. Then this is also a correct answer. Then this is also one uh, subsequence. So here these are the total subsequence possible as all the elements after the ith element means the i plus 1 element is greater than or equal to ith element that's why it is non decreasing means our condition is satisfied if you look at the second test case so here our answer is only 4 4 because you can't take 4 3 because 3 is less than 4 this will be decreasing and we know we need not decreasing that's why we didn't include a 4 3 4 2 or 3 2 or 2 1 we can't include them that's why we have only one answer that is 4 4 because it is this is not decreasing so guys, as you can see here, we are what we are doing is we are just making choices. So what we are doing choices? So what choice? Like uh, if you are given any array like four, three, one, two. So in this type of array, what you are doing? Making choices. Either to include this element or to include this or this or this. And based on the choices, we are forming subsequences. So let me show you by forming a decision tree. So, the, uh, so I hope you guys uh, understood the intuition. The intuition is only thing is we are uh, making a choice whether to include an element in the sub array or sub sequence or not. Now based on this intuition, we will derive a decision tree. So first uh, let me draw your decision tree. We would start with the first element 4. So 4, in, 4 not to include and 4 to include. So if you don't include 4, the subsequences will be empty. If you include 4, then you will have 4 in the subsequence. Now for the next next element, let's say 3 not to include, 3 to include. One both the side, 3 not to include and 3 include. So if you don't include 3 in here, then it will be empty. If you include 3, then you will have 3 in the subsequence. Here if you don't include 3, you will have 4 in the subsequence. Here in, if you include Three, then you have four three but you can't take four three here why because three is less than four this will be decreasing so in this case here in in this our uh, question we, if we have something like this then we will compare the last element of the current sequence subsequence and if the last element is greater than the current element then we won't do so here we won't include three right and our subsequence would be still four Okay, so what we would do here instead of uh, one, what let me take five and let me take a uh, six here, so that we will form one better answer. Now uh, talking about let's say five. Okay, for each subsequence we have two possibility: five not to include, five include. So if we won't include five, then our subsequence will still be empty. And if we include five, then we have five. And similarly here, either we would have three if not to include, and include including five we will get three comma five. Similarly, phi not to include phi to include. Then if we will have subsequence four and four and phi, and here the same thing phi not to include phi to include. So what we would have, we would have four. We would have four and phi. Okay. Now taking the last element six. And every time when we are including is, we will check if the new number should is greater than or equal to three. That means we have what we do, we, we will check 5 greater than equal to 3 or not. If this is the condition, then only we would add. Because here what we, uh, here during 3, the 4, uh, uh, means the 3 is not greater than equal to 4. So the condition didn't satisfy, that's, that's why we didn't add 3 here. So every time we would check that 6 not include, 6 include. So if you won't include 6, then this is one possible six subsequence. If you include the 6, then we will get 6, then 1, 5, and 5 comma 6. Similarly here, 3. 3 comma 6, 3 comma 5, 3, 5, 6, here 4, 4 comma 6, 4 comma 5, 
four five six four four comma six four comma five and four comma five comma six so these are all the possible subsequence for this uh, given nums array so for this nums array these are all the possible subsequences here this all and this all and from this what we would take we would store only the subsequence with length 2 in our answer so all this means greater than or equal to 2 we won't store 3 5 6 because these are of less length so this is how the decision tree forms here and based on this decision tree we, what we would do we would write one recursive solution and we would backtrack why we would backtrack we would backtrack to form all of the possible subsequences correct so whenever we form a decision tree like this then recursion plus backtracking is our primary solution or coding solution to this so i hope you guys understood why we are and how why we are doing recursion here and how the decision tree is formed based on the choices so now let's try to code this the same thing here okay so let me first initialize one answer Now one thing to note here is, uh, since uh, what we are taking only the unique, see these elements are 4, 6 and uh, we also got 4, 6 here, then we can't include this is this subsequence two times, so to include subsequence only once uh, in our answer, so for that I took one set of factors, so that we will only uh, store the unique subsequences, and then I will code one function, let's say backtrack, I would pass the nouns array. I will get one in I will store one index current index and also one subsequence uh, temp and you know if uh, index equal equals to nums dot size that this is the base condition then we would check if temp dot size is greater than uh, one that is it is two or more then we would add or insert in, in the temp or the subsequence into our answer and then we would return here so this is the base case now let us take the two variables current and previous to check whether the previous element uh, or, or the current element is greater than or equal to previous element so the current element is the index uh, and located at the index idx and the previous element is the last element of the subsequence so for that let me do one thing if temp.size equals to 0 that means we don't have any, any element in the temp. Then in that case, what I would do, I would return the least element. So that we can uh, add, means if, if there is not, nothing in this temp, then what is to compare? Like the comparison we did here, then there is nothing to compare. In that case, uh, to, to just uh, bypass the condition, I written minus 101. Because as you can see, a minus 100 is the least uh, uh, number or the value that is present in nums. So that's why I took minus one, 101 here. And if this is not the case, then I would simply uh, pass the last element of this vector or the, of this subsequence you can see. Now if current if this current is greater than or equal to previous this previous, then what we can do? We can insert that number into this subsequence temp, right? I would do temp dot push back nums of index and I would call this backtrack function nums index and temp and I I, means I have I also have the choice not to include so what for so for that I would again push back uh, this from I would again pop back for the number nums index from this so instead of norms index, I would write current for better understanding. So I have first pushed the current and then I am popping it back and then again calling this function. And see, it would be would call a function for the next index. So it would be index plus one. And in the as condition, what we would do, we would simply call the backtrack function, right? We would check for next element as for the three here. If we have added four, then we can't add three. So for that, we just directly, we will jump to five. Okay. And in the end, we would return. 
so here to go i will call this function but before that let me hmm, make this temp vector variable and i will call this backtrack function pass the nums the first index and the temporary vector then i would create one vector of vector vector of answer to return uh, this function and i would uh, i would traverse this set so let me rename this as a result auto it of answer i would just uh, push back it this value of it and i would return result okay so now let us try to run this i think the star won't come okay let us try to submit this so yeah our code got accepted see this is one thing where we are doing this with the help of set but the other way around is this way so uh, in this way what we are doing we are simply storing an element in the set and uh, if so just a minute let me copy this solution so and i will try to explain you with the help of this example so here if you do 4 6 7 with this 7 and 4 6 and with this 7 then uh, then it would be repetitive but to stop the repetition what we are using we are storing the element that we are adding with the help of set and then traversing with a for loop so let's say if this we already have 7 then we won't include this 7 in the subsequence correct so this is how we will prevent uh, the occurrence of the duplicate subsequence that is we did with the help of set and we don't need set here because we already uh, using a uh, set here so guys talking about the time complexity so for this solution where we are just using unordered set and this uh, backtrack function so it would be 2 raised to n 2, the, 2 to the power n into n but if we are so solving something like that with the help of this set then it will take 2 to the power n into n square because 2 to the power n for this backtrack function and n square for this set so instead of this you can try to solve this way and the space complexity will be also the same that would be 2 to the power n because that, that many number of subsequences will be generated so that's why uh, uh, the time and space complexity are of the power of 2 to the power n okay so i hope you guys understood the decision tree as well as the solution to this question and if you have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel thank you